Hey, it's T Rob here with the Biz Pulse. Uh, welcome back. Hopefully, uh, you learned something last time we were on here. And I've got an awesome show tonight because I have got uh, Ron Newsbaum with me. Ron is uh, number one, uh, a Marine. Uh, and we want to thank him for his service. Of course, that's more important than probably anything, or was a Marine. Let me put it that way. You're always Marine, I guess. But uh, Ron is uh, had decades of experience in construction industry. Um, he's a leader in that field in in you know action with mindset, trying to change some things in that field. And we'll talk about it all in the podcast here. Uh, but Ron also has developed a a really cool, uh, a really great software um, that's called Nut Nest uh, for the construction industry and. Uh, we'll get into that as well. I don't want to give everything away, but uh, I'm looking forward to just having a great conversation with Ron. And let's welcome Ron in. Welcome. Hey, hey, how's it going tonight? It's it's beautiful, man. Beautiful evening. Uh, get to talk to a guy that's got a ton of knowledge. So, uh, uh, Ron, thank you, thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me. I I'm truly I, I'm ready to rock and roll this is going to be amazing here tonight well cool so so i kind of i did a little bit of intro but i would love just like who's ron like tell me who ron is <laughs> yeah absolutely so ron ron was originally born in akron ohio i went to the marine corps when i was about 22. uh i spent four years in the marine corps i got married to my beautiful wife uh while i was in the marine corps and that took me to michigan uh, I ended up living in the Grand Rapids area for about 12 years, uh, and that's how I got into residential construction. I was looking for what what is that natural transition out of the Marine Corps. I was in a place where I didn't really know anybody. I was new to the area. Uh, it's where my wife grew up, so we had her family and everything around. But I was looking for, like, you know, what's that next adventure? I just got out of the Marine Corps. What are we going to do? And uh, I responded to a foreman and training ad. And that was the history of that. I've, I've now done everything from digging the hose to running the company and leadership management, sales, and everything in between when it comes to residential construction. And about uh, a year ago, I went full time into my company, Nut Nest. I'm the co founder and CEO. Uh, we're a customer communication platform for the construction industry. So I take a lot of that experience that I had before, and I actually developed a solution for some of the problems I was having. And uh, about nine months ago, we sold everything and moved down to Inward Iowa and decided we wanted to go live down by the ocean, uh, being that I'm completely remote with what I do now. So uh, that's kind of in a shell the story. Uh, who Ron Newsbaum is, is, you know, I'm a real, I'm a take action guy. I'm I don't want to consider myself aggressive, but I, I like to go after it. I like to have a huge vision and chase down the dream every day. And by doing that, I want to create a huge impact. I, I want to create something that is everlasting, that actually does change uh, people's lives and the perception in the construction industry as a whole. And I have I have a true passion to help veterans as well, being that I was in the Marine Corps. Uh, that's a, a true calling on my heart is to do something with veterans. Oh, very cool. Yeah. I mean, thank again, I just want to say a thank you for your service. It, it, it's really appreciated. Um, thank you. Um, so with that being said, I mean, you kind of did the condensed version and I'm sure there's like <laughs> There's with anything, there's all these ups and downs, right? There's highs and lows. Um, what is like a like a low in, in the in the construction field that you that you've seen that really kind of spark what you're trying to do now? So when I was running operations, I I, I would find myself out at aggravated or escalated customers' houses. And you know. That's not what I wanted to be doing, especially on the weekends and at night. And that's not what they wanted to be doing. And mm -hmm. that's not what I was even being paid to do. I was supposed to be helping to grow the company, helping to develop future leaders, put the systems in place, continue to grow it. And I can't do that if I'm dealing with escalated customers. And I had to figure out what is a solution to this. And I dove into it and I could link back 
almost 90% of my escalated customers to a, a singular communication breakdown at some point in time. They didn't get the answer they were looking for. They couldn't get a hold of who they were trying to get a hold of. There was just the ball got dropped uh, or, you know, somebody did something that they thought was said, but that's not, it was interpreted wrong. So there's all kinds of different ways that we can have communication breakdowns. And I decided that, something has to happen from that. And I will say like that was the low and kind of the high at the same time is I was out there in the trenches trying to figure out what is happening because we all know that this construction projects just go south. And when they go south, it goes from zero to a fully engulfed five alarm fire in like 12 hours. <laughs> yeah. So, I wanted to stop that because I wanted to make sure we were delivering amazing experiences. We were known for delivering great customer experiences. But one thing in the industry that we kind of have to look at, and I had to look in the mirror, is, you know, the communication is kind of the elephant in the room. Yeah. And we, all, we all can say that we're great communicators and our company does this amazingly. But the customers say different. So we kind of, <laughs> I kind of had to look at that. Like, you know, you had to figure out like, okay, so this is what I think, but this is what I'm hearing. You know, I heard communication sucks a lot of times. And I was like, but we're really good at this. And, but we weren't. And that's the thing is, you know, we had to figure out how to be better. And that's what led me down the road to where I'm at here now. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I mean, you saw, you saw something that needed change and you, you, you're going at it. So I, I, I appreciate that. And I mean, that, that takes a lot to, to go fix a problem, right. Or to, to try to go fix a problem. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a work in progress, like, like all of us and everything that we do. But when you talk about communication, um, I think the number is, you know, when, when people look at failed businesses, some would put it back to like 30% of them with probably a communication issue. People don't understand how big communication is in, in any business uh, for in, internal and external. Uh, so it's cool that you build a, a software that really, that's really what it's about is, is the communication piece. Yeah, it's really from an external internal perspective, communication at the end of the day is what, either makes or breaks a business. Like we have, you have, you have to learn to be a good communicator. You have to learn how to provide clarity in what you're saying. Like, I yeah. mean, uh, a platform like Nut Nest helps get everything in one place and organizes it, but it doesn't just make you a great communicator. Uh, you, there's still stuff that you have to work on and there's, there's just fundamental stuff that everybody should do to be better communicators. Yeah, I mean, let's talk about that because I mean, we 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 put you know action mindset. So, you want to talk about you know? I mean, I, I feel like mindset and communication kind of go together. So, can you touch on that? Yeah. So, well, I mean, action mindset is I'm a very action oriented person, and that this goes with communication because taking action is the first step. One thing that we find in communication breakdowns is the desire to not take action. Because you know that a bad outcome is coming from this, or you have to have a hard conversation, or you have to break the news at something. You know, it's just not the best. So then we don't take action on that conversation. And then that actually creates a compounding effect on how bad the situation can really <laughs> become. So I always believe that you should be taking the best foot forward, even if it's something that ends it positive to talk about. If something has happened, you need to take the action and just have the conversation, rip that bandaid off and go have the conversation because it's only going to continue to get worse. So, I mean, that's where action and communication comes in. I just, I think as individuals and leaders and business leaders or thought leaders or just anybody out there doing anything, action is a requirement. And the more that we understand that we just need to take action to get to where we're going, the better outcomes we're going to create. Because you can have great visions, a great mission, all this. Stuff, it can sound amazing. But if you're not willing to take the actions that's required to get to that end result, none of that matters. There will be no impact. 
Like yeah. my mission to go help 5 million people in the construction industry with communication. If I don't get up and do stuff like this, I'm not taking any action to move forward. I have to continue to do things to make that happen. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, and you know, like action in general is like, there, there's good and there's bad action, right? <laughs> but I, I like what you said because uh, I come from the service background and we always taught uh, our employees to like, uh, if you did something, address it then. Like if you if you break something in a house, address it then because if you leave it, it's it's you're either hiding it or it just gets worse, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 100 percent. And, you know, if you're doing something without malice in your heart, it's really hard for a bad outcome to come from that. And I think if more people understood that, like if you're taking action without malice in your heart, good things are going to happen from that. Now, are there going to be some sticky situations? Always. That's life. That's just that's kind of what it is. I like to I like to use the saying that the universe will always put us in the right place. It's up to us to decide what that outcome is supposed to be and then take the action to get to that outcome. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, that's really good. Um, so when you're teaching or when you're in a construction world, okay, we're just going to talk construction because that's that's your, your life. Um, how does it work with you? I mean, are you going into companies and saying, let me teach you how to communicate better. Let me put some action plans in place or, or how, how is that working? So I don't do any of like that aspect of stuff. Let okay. me rewind. That's not part of nut nest. Okay. I am more than willing to come into companies and help with that. That's I love doing stuff like that. That's just from my years in the industry and being able to sit down and talk systems and how that stuff works. I love to do that stuff. So I don't have a problem doing it, but that's not, that's not part of what NutNest does. NutNest is uh, a communication platform that's completely web-based for people in residential construction on the contractor side of things. And then we'll mobile app download for the homeowners. So if you're on the NutNest platform and you're using us to communicate with your customers, your customers are downloading the NutNest app, and that's how they communicate with you back and forth. Uh, you do get to see me for any onboarding or questions. I mean, I'm we're we're in the the thick of the startup mode here, so I'm I'm right in it. I'm out there. I want to I want to hear the feedback. I want to know what's going on. How is this working? How is that going? And vice versa. So you get to see me. You get to interact with me. But I'm not necessarily out doing trainings on how to communicate better. Okay, I got you. Um, so. You talked about you're in the startup mode. So how long has NutNest been around? So we, this, you want the short version or the long version? <laughs> well, I know you've been working on it probably here for like a long time. Yeah. So uh, it was originally a few years ago is when I started this journey. Now, being that I'm Ron Newsbaum from the construction industry, you go start knocking on doors at tech companies and places that operate in the software ordered, uh, yeah, that was kind of didn't go over the best of things uh, to say, <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm not from Silicon Valley. I'm not backed by $10 million, but I have an, I had an ID to a, a, a problem I was facing. So I brought this solution and, you know, a lot of times, I got good good feels about that, but people didn't think I was necessarily the guy because I'm not Mr. High Tech whatever here, you know, like I'm a, I'm a non-technical tech founder. Uh, so to get to where I'm at took a minute and it took a lot of action. That's why I'm so focused on action a lot of times is because if I would have just gave up every time somebody said, oh, hey, it's a great idea, but, you know, somebody else is probably going to be able to build that out better than what you could. This would have never got to where it's at now. Now, about 14 months ago, I got connected with the 10X incubator uh, in Project 10K and Jared oh, wow. Yellen, and I was able to partner with them. And they really, that's where this took off because they looked at it as Ron Newsbaum was the guy. 
we need to, and let's go do this. And I was like, hell yeah, Ron Nussbaum is the guy. Let's go do that. <laughs> so it took us a, a while to get this all built out and to get to where we are. So we had some early users that I knew that was using our software. We just went completely live just before about a week before Christmas. And now we're onboarding people. Uh, we got people signing up organically, just getting on the website and signing up and uh, getting themselves onboarded. So one of the magics that happened with what we built is it's just simple. Like that was my big thing is like this was built for the construction industry by the construction industry. So I like to say if you can get on Facebook, you can utilize our software. It's it's super easy for your homeowners and for you to be able to go on there and it provides you a singular place where all your communications kept, it's recorded. You can always go back and look at the different projects and different things that are happening and one amazing thing that's happened is we are delivering unprecedented access to communication. Like I couldn't even imagine when I first thought of this, because as an owner, you can go in and you can look at every project you have going on every channel and know exactly what is being said to your customers from your employees at any time throughout a project. And it's all right there. It's at your fingertips. You don't have to go chasing emails or text messages or WhatsApps or, you know, forbid, you know, something happens and you end up in a lawsuit. Here you go. You have everything in one place. You don't have to be going and chasing down all this documentation. Uh, we provide it all right there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it Ron, it's a beautiful website. Really well done. Um, and you know what? What what I love about it because I I I'm in been in the same industry as you is it's built by contractors for contractors because you and I have both used software that <laughs> some guy built that's probably never done an ounce of construction work in their life never been and it's like they're missing everything <laughs> so I, I appreciate that yeah you know that's one of the big you know the biggest question that I used to get and I still get sometimes, but I, I think I've cleared it up a lot is the adaption for technology in the construction industry and the pushback on that. And I, I disagree with that. I, I, I feel that the construction industry is hungry for technology and they yeah. want it. We just have a technology problem in the construction industry because we have too much stuff that's built, not with the end user in mind. Mm -hmm. Then we're not thinking about what does this, how does this impact the contractor? And then how does it impact the contractor's customer? Because at the end of the day, in my mind, what I want to do is I want to create something that the contractor or that residential home service provider or how, whatever that role is, goes out, they utilize it, and it creates a great experience for not only them, but their customer. Because then their customer goes out, refers them leaves five-star reviews, comes back to them, and has more work done. And that's yeah. where we can really start to have that impact. If we look at how are we building stuff in order to make that builder or contractor's life easier and easier for their homeowners, that's when we really start doing something amazing. And there's all too much software that is built with the bottom line in mind like that's all it is, is like we're going to charge you an arm and a leg to have this software and it's going to do nothing but track your bottom line. It's not going to increase your well-being as a human being. It's not going to make your life easier and it's surely not going to make your customer's life easier because a lot of the construction technology actually makes it harder for the customer of the contractors, which that's not doing them any favors. Right, right. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I love it. I mean, I, I love what you created and uh, it's a it's a must and a need. It's it's such a huge need, like you talked about. Like, I think contractors are just starving for good good technology to come their way. So great job, Ron, on this. Uh, so so for you to develop this, because I, you know, I, I'm in a techie world as well. Did you go to a development team or how did how did you come up with that? Well, you talked about it. You you partnered up with um 
those guys project were. 10, yeah, Project 10K, they became my partners in development team in this. So when you look at this amazing website, that's not Ron Newsbaum. <laughs> when you see the product, that was my vision, but they brought that vision to something that works and can be implemented out there and continue to grow. So yeah. uh, that, I mean, that, that for being a non-technical tech founder, that was the hardest hurdle to get over because I spent a lot of time around the wrong people that just, I couldn't get any traction and I couldn't figure out why. And it's because I was around the wrong people. Yeah. If you're if you're pitching your vision to people that could care less about your vision or that you just not I guess care less is a bad one. You don't have alignment. If you're if you're pitching your vision to people you don't have alignment with, it's really hard to execute on that vision. But once you find people that you have that alignment and that's when the magic starts to happen. That's that's when stuff starts rocking and rolling and you start getting to the results. That's when I met Jared from Project Tanke, who I, I consider him like a, a brother at this point in time. We're like family. I was just out in Phoenix and my wife went out there with us. Uh, we were at MenaceCon mm -hmm. doing a thing for Project Tanke and Nutness there. And it's amazing. Like just that relationship and just getting around the people that share your alignment and can see that vision and want to take that vision all the way to the end. Yeah, yeah, well, really cool. I know it's taken you a long time and a lot of work and uh, appreciate all the work you put in because I'm an entrepreneur and a business guy as well and I know the grind uh, and the probably the thinking all night about this kind of stuff. So really cool. So so how is the how is it how is the industry taking it? Or are, are you starting to get a lot of clients that are jumping on or how, how's it going? Yeah, we had a huge wait list. So we did a wait list oh, as good. we were developing it and we got we got a lot of traction with that. And it's amazing. So last week when I was in Arizona, I got my our first like just organic sign up. Like somebody just went on the website and signed up from I don't even know. I don't even know where. I know where I sent them a call and I sent them an email and everything. But uh so that to me was amazing because yeah. everything that we've got, everything we've been doing, it's all been stuff that we have created through uh -huh. partnerships and networking and my my network and that kind of stuff. And we were getting great feedback from that and people are excited. But to have somebody go on there, just sign up, set up their account and start utilizing it without even talking to them. That was completely amazing. I'll be honest. Like, yeah, that oh, yeah. that's what you up. want. <laughs> uh, we were just on stage at MenaceCon in Arizona in front of 600 people. And I talked about nut nests there. And this is all people in residential construction there. And, you know, I was actually surprised at the response and the applause that we got for what we've done because you know I, they, in the construction industry can be a hog crowd yeah. especially when you're talking about a pain point that really takes some looking in the mirror to say hey we do need to be better at this but i think this is such a, a wide known concern that we're at the point where something's got to give people are looking for solutions they want something that's easy to use and does what it says it's going to do. So I've been getting great feedback and I spent a few days talking to people after we were on stage there and everybody came up and just think they were thankful. Like there, that is what I kept hearing is, Hey, thanks for building something that's for us and addresses a need. Because yeah. I think we have a lot of technology that's not built for the industry. And on top of that, it's something that doesn't even address a real need. Like, it has pieces to it that does, but there's a lot of fluff that does it that makes it even harder. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, totally get it. I'm, I'm, I'm. I come from the like, make it simple, because people will use it. You know, I mean, some of the software I've been in front of, it's like 50 steps to do one thing. You know, and people don't utilize what even the capabilities of them. So. Um, yeah, and then that's see, that's what ends up happening, especially in the construction industry. And yeah. you know, we're not a CRM, we're not an Angie's level, we're no, we're communication. That's all we claim to be. That's all we want to be. I don't want to be this all encompassing software because then you lose that magic yeah. of what you were actually built to go do. 
Yeah, uh, for sure. One of the things we see all the time is with CRMs, they add on like these communication things or they automate it. And it actually makes it more confusing for the customer and the contractor because now you just added another realm in. You have emails and text messages, and now you have some other software that you're using that's automatically sending messages off. And it just makes it more confusing. So like you said, making something simple that just does what it's supposed to do is all that, like, that's what the industry is dying for. And I, I met some other guys that are from the industry that have still worked on or launched their own software platform. Same, same, same kind of thing where they're like, I just wanted to build what I needed. Like this right. is what my business needed. So I just, and then I decided, and then I found out like, you know, Hey, there's a whole industry that needs this. It's not just me. And it's amazing. Cause I think that's the shift that's going to happen in construction technology is you're going to start seeing more companies or more individuals go build the solutions they truly want instead of hafting to take some big one size fits all mm-hmm. platform and then try to make it work for their business. Yeah, I agree with you. So while you were doing this development on your on your software, what's one thing that uh, you didn't expect? Uh, so we have created in the, besides all the tech stuff, I didn't expect any of that. I didn't expect the, my designers and project managers to be as amazing as they are, like just mm-hmm. down to earth, able to just talk to you like a human being. Like, I, think <laughs> we, I think we think like, oh man, it's going to be all this crazy USAs. And it's probably not even a real term, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's all this stuff we're not going to be able to comprehend. And they were able to make it in a way where I fully understood it. And I got, they were able to take my vision and then bounce it back to me from a tech, not a tech standpoint. And I could understand what they're saying with the mainframes and everything before we even got it into development. So that was pretty amazing. But one of the things that came from me and the, the designer, the project manager working to other is right in the app, there's now a feed or like a timeline, say like a Facebook or Instagram timeline mm-hmm. that every time something gets updated in the project, for the homeowner, they see it right there in that feed. So if they open up their project in the app without even going into any of the messaging, anytime anything's updated, it just pops right up in that feed. And it's, to me, that was amazing because that's something that just came out of us building it because it was just like, well, we're going to have all these data points. It would only make sense if on the home screen, it reported all of that. And I was like, yeah. That. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's really cool. Um, so I always try to, you know, we talk about business on this show and I always try to and I talk about careers and uh, in your opinion, I mean, what's a what's a important personality trait or strength that someone should have if they want to go into the construction field? I think every personality fits in the construction order. I, I think I, I'm a high D personality. And I, I think a lot of people, that's what they think of when they mm-hmm. think of the construction order. But if you have a, a can do attitude and you want to learn, there's no greater opportunity than construction right now. Like, I mean, I think that's just the bottom line. I think we're starting to see this transpire nationally where people are talking about it. But the opportunity is you look at me as a kid getting out of the Marine Corps that went and worked as a laborer out in the field. But I had the desire to continue learning, continue to get better. And I kept working my way through the system. Mm-hmm. And that happens everywhere. I, I don't I don't have a college education. Mm -hmm. I have a high school education and here we are now. And I think any personality can do that in construction. I think uh, you got to have a little bit of thick, thick skin. You're starting out because it's not not the easiest route, but it's very rewarding and you get to build stuff like yeah. My my kids four four what four coming up on five, four and a half. We'll just say four. 
And, you know, like if he could go build stuff for like that would be his dream right now. And that's what we all were as kids. Yeah. But we lose we lose that. But you can refine that working in construction. Yeah. Because that's what you do. You go out and you build stuff. And, you know, my wife hates it. Now, she knows not as much now that we moved out of Michigan as I used to drive by stuff all the time and be like, oh, man, hey, I worked on like that, <laughs> that, that project right there. We've all seen the meme because we all do. It. Anybody in the industry has oh, done yeah. that because you have this sense of pride. So I think if you're looking for a great career trajectory and you got a can do attitude, and you're willing to go out there and get it done, any personality can fit in the construction industry. I've worked with every personality. Mm -hmm. And that's how it should be. Because that's how you create the ultimate success is you get all the different personalities together and get them moving right. in the right direction. You know, a bunch of Rons can get a lot of stuff done, but we can also cause a lot of problems. Yeah. So, you know, we need some other personalities in there to even that out and can continue to grow that. So if, yeah. if you're somebody out there right now that's looking for what's that next career look like or you're getting out of high school and you're wanting to transition into something, I 100 percent would go give construction a try. It, it's going to have a, a faster track career trajectory than anywhere else. And you're going to get to work with your hands every day. You're going to get to build stuff and it, 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 the, it's, you're going to be around the best group of people you've ever met. That That is 100% true. The guys I have worked with out in the field, uh, they would take your, they take their shirt off and their back yeah. and give it. Yeah, it it's an amazing group of guys uh, and girls. It, I mean, it really is. It, it's, yeah. it's an amazing order and I just wouldn't be scared of it. I yeah. know it can be really intimidating but it's not. It's it's not as intimidating as it's made out to be. Yeah. So so my son's 22 and he he started he's in construction and he started with custom wood floors and now he's a a project manager uh you know running wow. running residential jobs and commercial jobs and stuff. So uh yeah, he That's loves it. He loves it there? because it's before and after and you know, it's just he's wired that way, you know, like he you know, you know how it is when you can see yeah. something that you did like, wow, that, I did that. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, go ahead. Oh, I said moving right into that project manager role. I mean, like where else could he go do something like that? Like to me, it's amazing. Like the, the, the little, the career opportunities that are out there, if people go seize them is absolutely amazing, especially right now where there's a huge demand. Yeah. Like there's a huge need for people that want to go seize those opportunities. I, I, I truly think it's amazing. And your son, I mean, he's going to do amazing things just because of where he's already positioned himself in the industry. Like this, the, the sky's the limit for him. I mean, I guess out of space probably is at this <laughs> point in time. with where we're headed in his age. I mean, it's truly amazing what he'll be able to accomplish in his career in the construction industry. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I wish at 22, I had my, my stuff together at that time, but <laughs> I definitely no, didn't. Uh, so I was headed off to boot camp. So I was getting my, oh, tail. okay. Yeah. You're about to get your stuff together, huh? <laughs> yeah. Real quick. So what's like right now, what's a big, a big challenge that you're having with your business? Is there anything that's like, man, I got to conquer this or it's, I, Hey, it's the same thing with any new business or any startup. It's name recognition and it's getting it out there in front of people. So, you know, the biggest thing is, is I get on calls and I demo Nut Nest and talk to people about Nut Nest. And I hear, man, this is absolutely amazing. This is just what we needed. But I didn't know what Nut Nest even was until I talked to you. So, and that's what all businesses face. That's the herder we have to get over and everybody has to get over as you start out. Because if you don't go grind that out, get that name recognition, start to make a difference, make that impact, start having people talk about you and refers start to happen. It's that's, that's where businesses die. So that is definitely the biggest struggle is just getting the name out there. Yeah. 
for sure. I mean, for every, every business, I, I, I own a digital marketing agency. So that's something we deal with daily, you know, of like, okay, how do we get more people to this company? So yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely understand that. Um, so what is a, uh, what's the favorite uh, productivity hack that you use or something like, man, this is something I learned and you want to share it with anybody? <laughs> oh, uh you know, this, this might, it's going to be no rocket science here or anything or anything crazy. This is, you know, we're talking about the action mindset. So productivity hack is just write the five things down you need to do and just do them. Like, don't worry about anything else. Just get those five actions done and move on like yeah. that, that. I know it sounds like stone age here, but they, it truly works. Like just write it down and just do it and don't worry about it. Take that action that's necessary. And that's what will lead to productivity. Like it's never going to get any easier. It's all, it's probably going to just be hard because if it's something that you're having a challenge with, it's because in our mind, we think it's hard, but it probably isn't as hard as you think it is, but it's never going to get any easier. You might as well just write it down take the actions, send the emails, make the phone calls and just do it. Like it, it's, it's really not that hard. Yeah. That, that's great advice. And I would add one more thing to that is like, put that one thing that you really don't want to do on top and just get it done and get that, Absolutely. Get, the, get that stuff off of you. So great advice there, Ron, for sure. Um, another thing that I always ask people is, do you have any books that you recommend? Yes, 100%. So the 10X Rule, Grant Cardone, if you haven't read that, go pick it up right now. It's on Audible. It, it's everywhere. Uh, yeah. 75 Great Hard, book. Andy, Andy Frisella. Uh, that would definitely be right there in my number two. Traction by Gino Wick. If you're a business owner and you have never read Traction, uh just buy that right now as well. <laughs> so <laughs> those, those would definitely be my top three right there. You could throw in uh, a couple others, but I think those three right there definitely handle personal, business, and your mindset in all to other right there if you read those three books. Yeah, that's the great. You, you nailed it. Those are great books, those three. Uh, so, um, everyone, we're talking to Ron. He actually has a uh, software called Nut Nest, and uh, Ron's been in construction for a gazillion years, and he built something that actually the construction field needed. So, make sure you go over and check that out, share it with people. Um, and uh, Ron's an action guy. Ron's a, a ex marine that uh, that has done so many great things. One thing, uh, Ron, I just wanted to say is you, you talked about wanting to work with veterans more. Is, do you have a plan for that? Is there something you're working on currently? Yeah, so I'm uh, I'm interviewing with a couple of veterans places to do some volunteering at a kind of a high level. Or in uh, that, I got connected through some people that I knew that said, "Hey, you need to connect with these organizations." And uh, I'm really excited for what the outcome from that's going to be, especially a lot of a lot of leadership and entrepreneur training. Uh, for veterans and being able to use skill sets I already have yeah. to go out and help other people that are veterans. And, you know, I, I have a I have a picture of a jet on my wall because at the end of the day, uh, I plan on eventually owning a jet. And I, I, I believe that God puts visions in front of you because you can go get them. Right. It's not like there's a reason I need a jet and I really do believe it's something I'm going to do for veterans. I, I have this grand thing in my mind that I'm, I'm working through on exactly what it looks like, but I think that's going to be my next chapter. It's hard, hard to start writing the next chapter when you haven't finished up the chapter now. <laughs> uh, but I know at the end of the day, the greatness to go out and do something amazing for veterans is uh, what's truly going to drive my purpose. Uh, down the road. And it, I mean, it does now, but as we continue to grow here and become in a position where, you know, you can just start writing checks to start making stuff happen. Uh, that's definitely weighs heavily on my heart. Yeah, no, great, man. I, uh, 
I love your heart because I, I I'm the same way. Like that's that's why I do a lot of what I do is to to try to help others and uh, to try to use you know what God assets that I have to share them with other people. So I really appreciate you saying that. Um, so all your info I did put in the uh, video description. If anybody wants to contact Ron, I, I've got all his links in there. Uh, so. You can go chase him down on all. I think you you sent me five or six of them, so I just put them all in there. Oh, so I'm everywhere. I yeah, mean, man. Yeah, man. You're big time. You're big time. Yeah, go read 10x. You know why I'm everywhere. That's right. That's right. So, um, anything else you want to talk about, Ron, or mention? I mean, we've talked about your software. We talked about action a little bit, but I probably got off on the software, and I apologize for that. But um, anything else hey, you want to touch on? Yeah, it's all good. Uh, I would just say if you're sitting there with an ID today and you don't know what to do with it or what the next steps are, just take action. Like just do something that moves that forward, whether it's applying somewhere or, I mean, hey, go on Project 10K. Check them out. They're, they're a great resource. It's a great place. But just do something, even if you just get a pad out and write it down exactly how you think it should operate or set up a PowerPoint, get that, get it out of your mind and on the paper and then start putting your other list on who are the people you need to talk to and go take that action. Because the worst thing that could ever happen is that it goes to the grave with you. And we yeah. don't want that. We want you to go do amazing things and that requires taking action. Yeah, good man. That's that's perfect to end on, Ron, because I think that, like, like take action to do something. Like you know, like uh, I know you're around people, and I, I'm around people the same way. Like they talk about doing a lot of different things, and they never take action. So I would say it again, just like Ron said it: take action, move forward. If you're chasing something chase it and don't quit until you're there, you know, and uh, just keep pushing forward. So Ron, thank you so much for being on the biz pulse, man. Um, love what you do. Appreciate your heart, appreciate your service and uh, look forward to watching that, that software just continue to like, eh, before too long, everybody will know what it is, right? Absolutely. Uh, that's what, that's what we work on every day. And thank you for having me. I appreciate it. It has been fantastic. It is, it's truly been an honor. It has been a blast tonight. Yeah, man. Have a great evening, Ron, and we'll talk to you next time. You too. All right. So that was Ron Newsbaum with, uh, with, well, he does a lot of different things. And one thing that uh, really touched me was that Ron's, you know, was in the military and now he's wanting to work with veterans to help them. Um, just a good heart and uh, really a cool software, nutnest.com. Go check it out. Uh, if you're in construction, you know that communication is a huge thing. If you if you don't have good communication, you're probably going to fail, just to be honest, in any business. Uh, uh, so I urge you to go check out that. Um, and thank you guys so much for being on the Biz Pulse. Uh, please share it, like it throw it, whatever you got to do. Uh, hopefully you learn something on here. I'm always open. If you know somebody or, or think, Hey, this guy, my guy or gal might be a great guest. Um, knock on my door and let me know. And, uh, we'll try to get them on here. So thanks everyone. Have a great evening. We'll talk to you soon.